Welcome back to Trading 360. I'm Nicole Petalides, live at the New York Stock Exchange. Glad you're with us. It's time for the big three. Three stocks, three charts, three trades. Ben Lichtenstein will take us through the charts. Here to take us through the trades, Alan Nuckman, Chief Market Strategist at BullseyeOption.com. Thank you both for being with us. So we're seeing yields jumping, in fact, to the highest levels in about five months. This could, in fact, be the worst trading day of the year, at least for bulls. Um, Alan, what say you about this kind of day and where we may be headed? Well, I'm not going to overreact. I trade what I see, and looking at what we're seeing right now is the market is coming coming down. We're about 5% off the all-time top, and I know you've had guests. I've seen your guests saying they weren't going to buy until we had a 5% pullback. Now, we did see a bounce on Friday after that 5% pullback. Now, we're testing it again, and I think people just have acrophobia, fear of heights, for whatever reason. Trade what you see in the charts, and I see a lot of positives still in the charts. Now, even though we're below 5,000, uh, or we're very close to it right now, the VIX is nowhere near where we were last Friday. So let's let's see where we are by the end of the week. We've got a lot of earnings, 150 to S&P 500 uh, companies report this week. So that's that's what's going to drive the market. All right. That being said, uh, let's bring up the first one. And you go in the bank realm, Fifth Third Bank, FITB. Tell me a little bit about this one. Well, again, that's a perfect example of psychology. It wasn't so long ago that uh, everybody thought the banks were dead and it was over. That obviously was not true. XLF, the ETF that tracks the financials, just made all-time forever highs at the end of March. Now, this is a stock that's been stuck sideways, and we've been between 32 and 37 here in 2024. A breakout of that range targets uh, 42. What I'm seeing a lot in the charts, not only here, but in the S&P, uh, the S&P has come back to that to that gap that we saw in February. That's what markets often do. And deep down, I know Ben's a technician more than a talker. So if you look at it technically, markets often come back to the breakouts. And the S&P has been above 5,000 for two straight months with one exception, which was last Friday. So looking at this, this is holding above that gap at 32. So I'm looking to buy around that 32 level. This stock has a PE of 11. I'm looking at the August 32 call, which is deep in the money at that super support point. It's trading for about 550. The expiration break even with four months of time is about a dollar. And if we just get to that 42 target uh, of the breakout range at uh, that level, that option is going to gain about 100%. All right. What do you think here when you take a look at the charts of Fifth Third Bank, Ben? Nicole, I do have to agree with Alan in terms of trading the market, right? And I do agree that there are a lot of positives out there, this being one of them. Shares of FITB have been uh, doing pretty well as of recent, even with the broader market sell-off. Let's take a look here, though. I wanted to identify how this is a prime example of the two phases of price development that I look for, and I think your viewers should start to kind of view price activity through this lens as well. You have that horizontal phase where kind of random and not a lot of conviction associated with it. Transition into a high conviction phase, which normally comes in reaction to news. In fact, there was an earnings event, and then you transition back into that more overlapping rotational. So there's only two phases of development. That's the beauty of looking at price activity through the lens of auction market theories, the concepts of principles, and you transition from one to the next to the other, and it's kind of this wash or repeat Ross rinse repeat type pattern and then again in this instance you can see values moving higher so now we've got a five minute candle chart we're just looking at the last few trading days low conviction high conviction and the transition back into that horizontal phase so I went ahead and identified just two areas of price development here that I think your eyes should be drawn to you've got a easily identifiable consolidation area around 3450 the breakout to the upside is the earnings event sent price higher and then 36.50. Now, let's take a step back because the reason I like this is as you stack this up, right, we're looking at a five-minute candle chart, but uh, add a little time on and you're going to see a very similar pattern playing out here so we can identify that in this instance, now we've got an hourly candle chart value has been and continues to be moving higher, right? We're consolidating and holding this 35 range, testing the upper extreme. So here you can see right back to this $37 level. The other thing I want to point to is this area here. We kind of just bounced off the middle of that uh, value area. Oftentimes you do see a nice move higher. Again, earnings helped here, but there was anticipation into, take a look at where we are relative to the 50, the 200. There are a lot of positives out there. And Alan, I am a talker. You know that. I love 
love the sound of my own voice. In fact, my dad used to say that I was vaccinated with a phonograph needle. Oh my God, it's so funny. Uh, Alan, it's all you. So it's a good value. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> let's get to the next one. And you're here looking at Marathon. Tell us a little bit about that one, Marathon Digital. So Marathon Digital, so if, if you look at this sector, it's had a big pullback. It's 50% off its February 28th pop. That was not so long ago, but it's still up 100% in the last year. So it is a momentum stock that's had a pause. Now, this is trading within a range between 15 and 30 here for four months. It's got a gap above at 22 and a half, which is also the midpoint of this sideways trading range. So this is more aggressive than I usually am. I'm only going with two months of, of time in these options just because of the fact that the implied volatility is higher and they don't, the, the distant options get too expensive. So I'm looking at the June 15 call. 15, again, is that super support base. Um, I'm looking at that 15 call trading for about 475. It's 325 in the money. Again, that gap's at 32 and a half uh, up there. And if we get to that gap, that option's going to gain 100%. Now, also, since I'm buying less time than usual using that stock substitution strategy, I can look at the May option. And the May option, which only has one month at time, so is trading about 375. So if the stock sat here and did nothing for the next month, I could pitch it out and I'd be down about a dollar. So it's a, it's a looky-loo trade to look to see if we can bounce off this major, major, major support level <laughs> and maintain this really strong trend that's seen a pause. Yeah. Look, I mean, the, the first half of the 52 weeks is so steady. And then the last few months since end of December, it just has been wild all over the place coming off um, some recent lows, at least. So what are your thoughts, Ben, on Marathon? Yeah, well, I hope we get a chance to dive a little bit deeper into what is a looky loo trade, Alan. But let's start with the trend up here, because short term, we are seeing some momentum to the upside. We're kind of in this wide range of balance right now. So Alan could get some further gains here. It's random uh, until you look at the bigger picture, longer term chart. And then you're going to see we're trying to reverse a bit of a downtrend. We'll get into that in just a second. Let's start first and foremost, the last week or so price activity. Shares of MARA were trading down around 14 and rallied all the way up to the $20 level. Now, this is a key area. So for it to stall out here, I think a bit of a disappointment, but well-defined trend up bottom left, top right. No denying that, a 15-minute candle chart. Now, adding a little time on, you can see the significance of that spike as mentioned. And, well, take a look here because you can see how we didn't really hold up there very long as we traded up to that $32 level. So back down to 20 in here as I am uh, noting here, look, 20 has been an area of resistance for a while prior to that breakout, which again took us back to levels we hadn't seen since March of 2022, but limited in terms of ability to stay at that upper level. So I wanted to just take a step back because this is where I'm talking about that randomness. We're in a wide range here. We could test the upper extreme, lower extreme, and hang out in the middle for a while, and it just doesn't really exhibit a lot of conviction one way or the other. But we're trying to get something going here on the bigger picture. This is going to be a key area. Again, if we revisit that 35 area, you can see it's an area where, well, we stalled out, but that trend lower that we had been seeing kind of also stalled lower as we got back above that 26 uh, level. So, yeah, I mean, kind of wide range, a bit of a mess down here, not necessarily something I like to get involved in, but it could be that within that randomness, we get a further uh, boost here to the upside, that's for sure. All right, thank you for that. Um, good <laughs> look there at the chart. Final thought here on this one, Alan, and then Cameco, please. Yeah, it's about a risk reward play. And obviously this is a stock that's involved in the in the crypto sector. So uh, we've seen crypto, we've seen the Bitcoin stall out at 60. So it's got a super support level at 60,000. And this stock has a super support level at 15. So I'm buying an option. And again, the looky loo part is, is if I get into this play, limited risk, a lot of upside potential. If nothing happens in the next month, I throw out this option, sell it back, and if we haven't moved at all, the option is going to you know, depreciate maybe a dollar. So I get a chance to look and see if we get some development or not. All right. And then I see some positive comments from Goldman Sachs and CIBC outperforms and buy ratings on Camago. CCJ is the ticker symbol. One year up 85 percent. Certainly been a good performer. Um, where do you think this is headed and why? Well, number one, earnings come out very soon in this stock. I'm not an earnings gambler because earnings can just be binary. 
But what I am looking at is on the long term chart, I'm looking for this this stock to continue to move higher. We've been between 40 and 50 uh, for six months. A breakout of that 50 range target 60. It's just that simple. I'm also seeing leverage accumulation and positioning in this stock. So maybe the earnings are the catalyst, but I'm not playing the earnings in, in, in those terms. I'm trading a September option, which has a lot of time for development, almost six months of time. So if the earnings benefit it, great. If it doesn't, so what? I'm looking overall to see what happens over the next six months. I'm going deep in the money. I'm looking at that 40 call that's trading for about 1050. It's you know eight dollars or so in the money, a deep in the money option. I have limited risk. I've got plenty, plenty of time for development. And I do want to say that even with all the talk about rates, yeah, we're gonna we're we're still uh, pricing in rate cuts, 30% July, 60% September, 80% by December. You can't have it both ways. You can't say that the markets are are too hot with you know the unemployment numbers too strong, and then say that the GDP is too weak. And then you know that's the point. We're trying to finesse this, and so far the Fed has done exactly what we want, and we're five percent off the all-time forever top in the stock market with all that's happening globally in the world. Uh, so I, I remain very, very positive. The dollar has not gone up that much. We've kicked back down one more time. So I think that would benefit a lot of commodities and commodity stocks as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this could be the worst day of the year. We'll see how it finishes. But um, it's only one point, and a half there's percent. There's a lot though. of good. That's what's important. In percentage terms, it's one and a half, one and a quarter percent. It's not right. catastrophic. Right. Right. OK, um, Ben, why don't you take a look at the CCJ chart? Yeah, I like uh, the idea of uh, extending this one out and giving it plenty of time, because uh, in this instance, uh, definitely time has been on the side uh, of the bulls here. Uh, let's take a look here at the run up we've seen. And uh, just first and foremost, a, a very quick look at the hourly candle chart here, and then we'll get into the bigger picture. You can see uh, strength, right? Simply put. Run up to 5264 and balance that's formed since. I like to look for acceptance after a big move up like this. And we're definitely seeing it. Again, an hourly candle chart where value has been forming around 48. We're going back over the last few weeks here. This run up occurred, if you remember, we were down in the uh, end of March trading around this. 42, $41 level, and again, all the way up to 56, a significant move higher. Accepting this upper level, I think that's most important here. So let's add a little time on, right? And we can really start to look at that longer term uh, trend here. As we do, you're going to see bottom left, top right. We're going all the way back to uh, March, the pandemic, basically, 2020, 530 is where uh, the stock was trading all the way again up to 52.64. Now, you can see a bit of a double top up here, a little bit of a concern for the bulls, but it's possible that we just find a bit of a uh, range here and continue to consolidate around this $48 level. So we just looked at the significance associated with that on the hourly time frame after the run-up we saw uh, throughout the month of April. And then you can see, again, uh, the significance associated with it on that longer term. So 48 is what I've got my eye on. And then I think you could sort of view that area as a balance. I, I sort of draw, drew this all as one, but maybe the line in the sand being the 38 area. And notice how we did test that, if you remember, earlier this year. So uh, maybe an area of balance you really wanted to get a little bit more granular and focus on uh, tighten that up a bit, because otherwise you've got to kind of give it down to the $26 level before it really invalidates this trend up. But let's take a look here, because this is another uh, very positive in many ways in terms of what Alan's been talking about here today, holding above the 50, holding above the 200. Now, we did recently see a higher high that stalled out and failed to see any real follow through. Again, not necessarily what the bulls want to see, but RSI is kind of hanging in there pretty well and uh, holding above these closely watched moving averages. So bullish tendencies across the board here, I think, in terms of favoring long side on this one. And again, in terms of Alan, giving this one a little bit of time to uh, uh, breathe here, I'd have to agree with that as well. Yeah. Thank you both so much. Alan, a final thought? Well, I want to thank anybody who uh, gave Ben his coffee and donut this morning because he's in a very good mood. <laughs> so I'm just going to take what I get, and I, I like it so far today. All right. Okay, let's not jinx it, right? Okay, good to see you both. Thank you, Alan Nachman and Ben Lichtenstein okay. for the big three today. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Up next, a spotlight on Meta. Tough day. It's selling off. Had its latest earnings report. More spending. Revenue outlook weaker than expected. We have the analyst that covers the stock over at CFRA. We'll be right back.
Ameritrade is now part of Schwab, bringing you